And I remember um, with my wife, um, 2004, uh, there's a picture of our family there. I said to Jean, does it get any better than this? We were on the top of the mountain. Uh, we had, um, I, was, I was obviously working in this uh, incredible job, um, earning a ridiculous amount of money as an international expat banker. Um, beautiful wife. You might think I had four children, actually, if, you, if you're looking at the slide of the family there. Uh, actually, Jeannie's the second one in from the right. She looks so young that she looks as though she could be one of my children, but that's Jeannie there. And then going in from the right, that's Alex, our youngest son, Ben, our middle son, and then Rebecca is our oldest daughter. Uh, beautiful, beautiful family. Uh, love them so, so very much. All incredibly talented, uh, great athletes. I used to be a, a middle distance runner. Right? They're all, they were all amazing athletes. Jeannie was a was a ballerina. She she was at the Royal Ballet School, um, and so we were living in this place. Had a great walk with Jesus Christ in this great church. We were seeing wonderful things happening. People were coming to faith in Christ in our home. We were running Alpha in our home again. It's a great introduction to Jesus in this beautiful home in this beautiful part of the North Shore of Chicago. And I said, Jeannie, does it get any better than this? I mean, we, this is it. And it was, you know, we, we had so much there. But, you know, shortly after that, the Lord gave me a bit of a heads up, and he, he told me that, that, that we were going to go through a period of brokenness. See, we never know. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow or even later on today. No one knows. Only God knows. And all we can do is, again, just surrender our lives to him. And so um, not long after that, in fact, it was 2005, and the wheels started to come off. And in, in 2005, our... At the end of the year, um, our precious son, Alex, it was on the 8th of November, 2005, and he took a drug. Um, he was trying to help a boy at school. Uh, he had a sweet, sweetheart, Alex, and wanted to try and help this boy, so he was trying to be, be friends with him. But he was a troubled boy, and Alex took, took a drug with this boy and became very delusional. It really messed him up. There was some cyberbullying going on. Uh, there was some Wiccan stuff happening as well. It was... It was evil, to, to be frank, totally evil. And uh, on the evening of the uh, 8th of November 2005, uh, our youngest son, Alex, went out and, and committed suicide. So from being on the top of the mountain, um, we were now thrown down into the darkest pit. And it was the most horrendous time you can imagine. We'd never come across suicide before. I mean, Alex was so talented. He was an unbelievable runner, brilliant runner, popular boy. And then suddenly this happened. Uh, my, my precious wife, who be, we'd been so in love for 24 years, serving God for 24 years up to that point. She just couldn't reconcile what had happened. And um, she, went from, she went from shock to anger to hatred because the horrible thing with suicide is blame. Uh, how, how, why didn't we see it? Why didn't we do something about it? Why didn't we stop it? Blame for herself, blame for me, blame for God. And, she, and that, that turned into, into hate, um, hatred out of her terrible grief. And uh, it, was, it was just, the, I haven't got the words to even describe it. It was so painful. And so what, what happened there was that uh, Jeannie then, um, not just running from God, she lost her faith for, for two, two years. And what I did was, to, while she ran away from God, I ran to God. I ran headlong to him. And uh, scripture was so important at that time for me. Uh, just holding on to God's promises by my fingernails most of the time, hanging on to his promises. Uh, and came to, to realize how much grace is the thing that holds us up. Because I was finished in myself. Statistically, our marriage should have failed. Um, Jeannie wanted to, to, to break up. Um, she, it was like a sort of mental torture. She offloaded her pain on, onto me, blaming me for, for what happened there and blaming herself. She nearly died of a broken heart. There was emergency surgery. On and on and on, all these things were going on. And so I used to go to the throne of grace. I, I discovered in that time a level of intimacy with God that you, you, you can't to describe. It says he's close to the brokenhearted, and my heart was shattered. And I... I used to go in the early hours of the morning. I had to get up. Um, I was working still in, in the bank at that time, and, but I used to get up about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, go down to my study, and weep 
at the throne of grace. Uh, Hebrews 4, verse 16, it says, we go boldly to the throne of throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace, very simply, is God's provision for our wherever we are. Obviously, we're saved by grace, but also it's grace for every part of our life. In a word, grace really is Jesus because he's our everything. And I came to realize in that time that uh, he provides for us where we are in our life. I don't know where you are in your life. Maybe you're brokenhearted. Maybe you're struggling at work. Maybe you're struggling in a relationship and family. Maybe there's things in your life you don't understand. I want to say unequivocally that there's a place where you can go to find what you need for this time of your life. 